everybody. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm glad that we are all here tonight. Um, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, for Carol, for asking me to do this. Just to let you guys know, I have notes. So if I'm looking to the side, because I tend to squirrel. And I don't want to squirrel because this is a really important topic. This is how I've grown my business a lot is through vendor events. And I'm also going to talk about sample groups, which has been really good for me as well. So the first question I get asked a lot is where do I find the vendor events? And you can find vendor events anywhere, anywhere on Facebook. Um, there's, if you're in Pennsylvania, there's actually a group called uh, Events by Jennifer, I think it is. And she has events that she puts on all year round. You can join her email list. You can just go on Facebook and put vendor events near me. Um, I'm constantly on the road. So I'm looking like at signs in front of churches, in front of um, farmers markets, in front of firehouses, schools, any kind of fundraising groups, dog rescues, you name it, you can find vendor events anywhere. Ask your friends, ask your friends about if they're doing one at their church or their kid's school, ask other MLMs. I'm really surprised. I have a lot of friends that do other MLMs and I ask them where they're doing their vendor events and then they'll give me the contact information. It's network marketing, right? So network with your other friends that are doing other MLMs to, hi Carol, um, to find out where the vendor events are. Ask anyone and everyone if they know of any vendor events. Search the web um, and search your niche. I know that I don't really like to use the word niche, but search your interests. Um, so I do a lot of them for pet rescues. Dogs are my thing. So I'll do them for pet rescues. If you're in mom's groups, do your mom's groups. If you're in healthcare, I'm a nurse. So I'll do one at you know nursing homes or hospitals. If you're into cooking, if you're into craft shows, you can find vendor events anywhere, I'm telling you. So I want to talk really about your display. And again, this is just how I do it. I've been um, a Young Living Brand Partner for just about five years, and I've really changed how I do my vendor events. I look back when the memories come up on Facebook at some of my first ones, and I'm like, ooh. So you want to do what's comfortable for you. The biggest thing I could say is tailor it to the event. So if you're doing one for a pet rescue, I've done a number for pet rescues, make sure you're showing the animal sense stuff, right? Make sure you have Sprout or you have Snowy or you have, um, I forget the other guy's name, the other owl, you know, make sure you're doing that. If you're doing one, I do one um, twice a year for a um, raises money for kids cancer. I make sure I have the kids oils, the anxiety oils, the stress oils. So you really want to make sure that you're tailoring it to the event. Okay. Um, so on your display, you know, I've also, I want to just go back. I've done them like for a car show and I geared it towards like guy stuff, right. And the thieves cleaning and things like that. And the suit shoe tran line. So um, it depends how much space you have on what you want to show. So I think since they did the make a shift bundles, that has made my table displays so much easier. You don't have to have like for the thieves and the ninja make a shift. You don't have to buy the bundle because we, you probably all have those items. I have an empty box of the ninja packets. I have an empty nitro box. I have a little nitro, a packet of ninja. You don't have to have the actual things. I have all the thieves products. So I put my own bundles together. I did get the make a shift oils one and I display that. And really my table is that and the, and the original PSB because unless it's a specialized vendor event, again, the kids, those are the things I want to bring people in with. Okay. Um, I personally don't like a cluttered table. I, you know, people are coming through these vendor events, especially if there's a lot of vendors and they're kind of coming through. They don't have time to really look at everything. Again, it's just my personal opinion. I don't put all the supplements out. I don't put everything. I make sure that what I'm showing are the product lines, the ninja, the thieves, 
the oils and really keep it eye catching. You want people to stop. Um, I have two Ninja bottles with lights in them. I have my Aria going with changing colors and the music going. So you want people to stop. Again, you want to show product lines. Um, the supplements are great to show, but to me, they're not going to stop at that. They're going to stop the, you know, you want them. Yeah. We want people to get the supplements, but to me, it's just harder because I'm only going to show what I'm using. Okay. Um, so the make a shift, great, great, great for displays right now. Um, and I show what I love and what I use. I don't have kits. I do have all the kids oils. Okay. And I do have all the diffusers, all the kid diffusers and I show them and I can talk about them, but pets are really big for me. Like using oils on my puppy is really important to me. So I'm going to use what I know and show what I know. So pets is a no brainer for me. Ningxia is a no brainer for me. Thieves is a no brainer for me. Okay. So you really want to tailor your display and keep it clean. There's a um, saying that they use called KISS, which is keep it simple, stupid. Um, and I think a simple table is really more eye-catching instead of like a whole, whole lot of stuff, okay? Um, you want to talk to the organizer of the event and make sure that they're advertising. Um, ask them where they're advertising. Are they advertising it on Facebook? And you want to do the same thing. You want to put it in your groups. You want to put it on your personal wall. You want your customers, your caring customers to come. You want your friends that aren't customers to come. Um, so you want to don't rely on them to do the advertising. Um, message your prospects, tell them that this is where you're going to be and say, like, if you have an Itovi or a Zaito, you know, tell them, Hey, I know we've been having a hard time connecting, but I'm going to be at this vendor event. I'm going to have my Itovi with me. I would love for you to come. So message your prospects, message your team, ask your team members, even if they're not brand partners, I've asked team members to come help me when I know it's going to be really busy and I'll offer them a, like a account credit. Or maybe I'll offer them an oil I know they've been eyeing up um, just to come out and help me. So ask your team members to help me help you. Ask your brand partners to help you. Um, and then if I do have a brand partner that comes out to help me, I say, hey, this is great. Look, anyone that we get today, um, we're going to put under you. Okay, so it's really a good way, especially your new brand partners, um, to be able to start stacking them. Um you know, I have, I have a two, like, I, I think it's a go bag. I, I forget what it's called. Um, when I lived in Florida, we lived in an evacuation zone. So we had a bag that when we were told to evacuate, we would grab the bag. And I have my vendor bag, bags, kind of similar, ready to go. Okay. So if someone calls me and says, hey, there's a vendor event Saturday, someone backed out, there's a table space. I am ready to go. Everything is there, I don't have to search around everything, all my brochures, everything that I'm going to display is right there. I grab it, I load my car, okay? Um, so you just want everything ready. You don't want to be searching for stuff. You don't want to forget stuff. Um, I actually, funny enough, I did a vendor event a couple weeks ago. It was a Saturday night at a firehouse. And I had everything to go, but I had just gotten new business cards, and I had them sitting on my desk and I kept telling myself, put them in your bag, put them in your bag. And sure enough, got to the firehouse, was getting all set up. And I realized I forgot my business cards. So I had to call my husband and fortunately he brought them over to me. So I now took some of those business cards and put them in my bag. Um, so you don't want to forget anything. You don't want to be searching for your stuff, your displays, um, you know, if you're going to be, I, fortunately I have an extra aria, so I have that ready. Just have everything ready to go. Okay. So some tips and tricks, um, when you're at the event, to me, vendor events are like speed dating. You got to hook them quick, right? So you want to stand in front of your table. You want to have your business cards in your hands. Okay. Or if you have a form that you want them to fill out, you want that in your hands um, and keep your favorite oil. Okay. So I always have an oil in my hands or in my pocket. So when you start talking to people, you can tell them like, Hey, can I drop an oil on you today? You know, or do you want to smell this oil? And usually for me, it's peace and calming, valor, something really common that's going to grab them. 
okay? When you're signing up for the event, I always ask for a table near electric, okay? Some vendor halls, there's very few electric outlets. So if you tell them right away that you would like to be near electric, they usually accommodate that. I do have two Kinitos. Um, however, sometimes, I don't know, maybe they won't work or something like that. And I wanna make sure that my diffuser can always be running. My laptop, I can have my laptop plugged in if I need to. If I need to charge my um, Itovi, I can charge my Itovi. So I try and always get near electric. Um, I also ask, can I be near the entrance? And this is my philosophy on that. People are going to see you when they come in, right? And if there are shoppers like I am, a lot of times people want to make the rounds. They want to go through the vendor event, see what everything is, right? See where they're going to spend their money. Some people impulse buy right at the table, and then they're going to make their rounds again to go back to the tables they want to. Um, and I've watched this at vendor events. I've watched people go around once or twice. So if you're at the entrance, they're going to see you right when you come in, right? You're going to greet them. You're going to tell them to have a great shopping experience. And then they're going to see you on the way out too. So you're going to be like, oh, what did you get? You're going to see that they have packages. You're going to stop them and talk to them. Okay. So that's really good um, to be near the entrance. I always like to set up early. I like to, my table set up when people are then other vendors are still bringing their stuff in so i find out what time will the doors open that i can be there and i am there i get set up early okay because then once i'm done what i do is i go around and i go and ask the vendors if they need any help can i help them carry something in you're making friends you're making connections um i've actually signed up a number of other vendors at vendors of vendor events. Okay. So, you know, ask them, is there anything I can help you with? Um, oh, what is it that you have? And start looking at their stuff. I carry my cards when I go introduce them. And depending on how big the event is, I have also made up little packets that have um, a packet of Ningxia and like a mini stress away roller. Um, and I give it to them with my business card. And I'm like, I hope you have a great day. I make sure that the ninja is cold. And I tell them, I'm like, hey, when you're feeling a slump in the day, you can drink this. I have a little ninja info card that I also give them. And I tell them a little bit about it. They're setting up. So they don't have a lot of time to talk, but I just leave that with them. Um, and as far as the info forms, you know, to gather people's information, um, I've changed that a little bit. I do have my forms out, which has a checklist that has their name, email, phone number, um, and different categories. Like I'm looking for sleep. I'm looking for overall body wellness. I'm looking for body system support, a number of different things. I am interested in doing the best business. Oh, I love that, Karen. I put a drop of stress away or peppermint on my business card. That's awesome. I like that. I have to remember that one. Um, so... Um, yeah. So now I say I read that and I forgot where I was. Okay. So the info form. Um, so I have it on my table. I do, but I really, I, I want people to fill it out because I want to gather their information. But what I like to do is have them fill it out with me helping them. Because when they're done and they hand it to me, I then turn around and I write little notes did I have a conversation with them? Are they looking for sleep? Have they never heard of Young Living? Oh, they used Young Living five, five years ago. I write what they look like because then when I go home the next day, I'm going to be able to remember. I'm like, oh, right. She had a headband. She had glasses. She was tall, thin. It, it helps me remember who they were. Would you be willing to share your form? Um, Marsha, I would. If you would send me... Um, a PM on Facebook. Um, and I will, um, get that sent to you. I don't, I can't share it right now. I'm a little tech challenged, but, um, I would be more than happy to, um, send that to you. It's a good form. And I'd be more than happy to send that to you. You're welcome. Um, so the form again, I don't use that form and ask people to fill it out. Again, this is all personal opinion. I do not 
ask people to fill the form out to win a prize. And I'm going to tell you why. I have learned my lesson. People are only going to fill that. Most people are only going to fill that form out to win the prize. Okay. I want people to fill that form out because they're truly interested. I've had a discussion with them. I don't want to give away whatever the prize is just to give it away and not have them use it. Okay. And then I don't, I don't have their inform. I have their information because they filled out the form, but I've just learned my lesson and I don't really do that. Like fill out this form and win a prize because then you don't know if they're interested in getting your newsletters, getting your project broadcasts. Whereas if I'm talking to them about the form, I can ask them, I'm like, do you mind if I add you to my newsletter? Oh, can we become friends on Facebook? And I friend them right there. Okay. So the form to me is more genuine. If I do that again, that's just my personal opinion. Okay. About the form. Um, and then this way, while I'm talking to them, I can talk to them, you know, I could tell them that I'll be able to tell them about my upcoming events and things like that. I send them away with my card. Um, sometimes I send them away with a ditch and switch checklist. Um, depending on my conversation is what I'm literally going to take a brochure and hand it to them and have the conversation. Um, another question I get asked a lot is, um, should I sell stuff? So this is completely an individual feeling and thought. I don't sell anything. I did it once. Um, my brand partner and I, we had a bunch of oils and we priced them all out and we were selling the oils. And I felt that people were spending more time searching through the oils for something they wanted. And then they're like, well, what does this smell like? Well, we didn't want to open the oil. So we were spending more time for them to just buy one oil. Um, and yes, people sell Thieves Cleaner and they sell different products. To me, I want to focus on long-term usage. Um, I don't want people to buy and fly. That's what I call it. They're going to buy an oil or buy a bottle of these from me. I didn't get their contact information. They don't want to get the contact. Give me the contact information. So in all honesty, I just don't, I just don't sell. And again, that is completely up to you. I don't DIY. I don't craft. Um, and you know, there's young living policy and procedure on that. So you have to determine what's best for you, but it's just not my gig to be selling. I want to focus on conversations and I want to be focusing on getting products in their hand for long-term use. Okay. Um, I have had flip kits, but um, I don't have a flip kit right now. Um, and I, if they're interested in getting it right then and there, I sign them up right then and there. Okay. Um, if I have a flip kit, certainly um, they can get it but we have so many different kits. Um, financially, I can't afford to have them all. So I let them know how good our shipping is. Um, as far as giveaways, I talked about that. I talked about not just doing a giveaway just to collect their information. I only do it, um, you know, if I do have a giveaway to do, I don't really bring a, bring a lot of attention to it. And I'm only going to do it for the people that I had the discussion with that filled out the form that I know are truly, truly interested. Um, I tell them I want to get them, you know, be their Facebook friends and I want to educate them and I have an education group and I have a newsletter. So I'd prefer to do that. Um, so I used to do giveaways like crazy, but I've really changed my thought process on it. What are your thoughts on opened? Let me see. I'm going to open up the chat, take a little bit of break. Would you be willing to share your form? What are your thoughts on open PSK oils for them to smell? Oh, yes. Um, good question. Um, Karen, I do have my PSK is opened and I do let them smell it. Plus I have my bag of oils that I carry with me all the time. And I always have that handy. So if I'm having a conversation with them oh, about headaches, migraine, something like that. I have M grain with me and I'll let them smell it. So I have my oils too. And I love having people, I'll go through the whole PSK and let them smell it if they want. So absolutely. I do do that. Um, as far as follow-up goes, um, I get them added to my group and my newsletter, my project broadcast. I let them know I'm going to do that. Um, if they fill out the form, I send them a follow-up email 
24, 48 hours max. I don't want them to forget. I just want to thank them, you know, for stopping by my table, address something that we talked about, um, let them know I could put a wish list together. Maybe I've already, maybe they already want me to put a wish list together. So that introductory thank you email will have their wish list in there. Um, this is your business. So you don't want them to forget you and you want them to feel valued. I want the people I meet at vendor events to feel like they were the best thing that happened to me that day. Even if they didn't make a purchase, they're very important to me. Um, once I get in my groups, they accept my um, invitation. I'll tag them in posts. Um, before I leave, I ask the event organizer. This is all kind of like wrapping up the vendor event. I ask the event organizer when the next one is scheduled for, and I sign up right then and there. Don't even look at my calendar. I'll figure it out. Um, I also ask other vendors. Hey, do you guys know any vendor events coming up? I talk to them because remember, I've already introduced myself at the beginning. I try and make another round once or twice. And as everyone's kind of wrapping up and know how to do tonight, I ask them if they know of any other vendor events. And I've already shared business cards with them. Okay. And I ask them how they find their events. So I've had great success at vendor events. Um, I recently did one at a firehouse and it was not a successful event for any of the vendors. And the guy that the fireman's wife that arranged it. She was walking around to all the vendors and saying, I'm really sorry, this wasn't a good event. We didn't have a good turnout. We shouldn't have done it on a Saturday night. It was raining and blah, 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 blah. And I just started having a conversation. I'm like, yeah, but it was a lot of fun. We played bingo and we just had a lot of fun. And it ended up, she started like, as I was packing up, she started smelling some of my oils, right? And she started talking to me about her kids and the problems she's having with her kids sleeping. And we became friends on Facebook and last Saturday I was doing some prospect follow-up and I sent her a message. I'm like, Hey, did you ever get a chance to look at that wish list? Um, Cause I sent her one for her kids and she's like, Oh my God, thank you for the reminder. We've all heard that before. Right. Thank you for the reminder. And she looked at it. And don't you think she's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get some things. I need a couple other suggestions. And I gave them to her. And this is exactly when on Saturday night, our website went down. And I wanted to cry. She's like, I'm clicking on the wish list and it's, there's nothing happening. Um, and it came up a couple minutes later. And lo and behold, um, she said, I hope I did everything right. And I went in my VO and she signed up for like 135 PV on loyalty. And then was messaged me, you're going to help me next month on what to decide. So, you know, follow up is important. And this is my thing. It's nice to get those people on loyalty and it's definitely amazing to get them over a hundred PV, especially with the trips and the contests and the points, but I focus on just getting them started. Okay. I just want them to start. I recently was at a vendor event where she, a girl came up to me and she's like, I used to use M grain and I've run out and I can't get in touch with the person I used to get it from. And I'm like, all right, cool. I told her about loyalty. I told her about all the, the perks of, you know, ordering more than that. She's like, no, I just want the M grain. And I was fine with that. And I signed her up for a bottle of M grain. Okay. Still follow up with her. She's still in my newsletter. She's still in my education group. I still treat her just like any other customer. I gave her what she wanted. Same. I was at a DIY class. I did a DIY class at a cancer retreat center. And afterwards there was a girl who said she used to be by thieves cleaner and thieves toothpaste from a store. She said, but I'd rather buy from you. Can I just buy those two things? I said, absolutely. And she just bought the toothpaste and the thieves cleaner. And again, I treat her like any other customer. Um, always take pictures of your vendor tables too, mm -hmm. just an FYI. Um, so you remember how it looked and what you want to adjust. So quick question, Melissa, do I have time real quick to do sample groups? Melissa, Carol, could you please share how you approach the pet rescues and the hospice that you've done vendor events for? Yes. Okay. So I'll do that instead of, um, well, yeah, Carol, I'll do that. So the pet rescues, um, I have, I'm friends with a number of pet rescues and I got this idea that, you know, their pet rescues are always fundraising, always 
They're always desperate for money. So I reached out to all of them and I asked them if they would allow me to do a fundraiser for them. And um, I could, I would be posting on their Facebook page. Um, I focused on not only just the pet stuff, um, but kid stuff, pet stuff, the thieves, you know, I really tailored it. And depending on them, they let me post anywhere from one to three times a day um, for a week. It's usually about a week. Okay. And I would just post on their page. And I clearly, I introduced myself. I said that I had permission to do this and I was donating and we came up with, it was really, I think it was, um, I was basically giving for every hundred PV, I was donating $25 to the rescue. So, um, and then um, I was actually match, going to match it myself with, not match it, but do another $10. So to be a total of $35 if they signed up for loyalty. Um, so I've raised some money for pet rescues that way. Um, okay. And Carol, I will share about the sample groups too. Um, so you can reach out to, if you, you know, if you're a pet person, reach out to the rescues. I'd be happy to um, walk you through that if you want to personally message me, but pet rescues are hungry to earn money and, you know, don't randomly message them. Um, but you know, if you're involved with them or you have friends involved with them, they want to raise money. Okay. Um, the other thing is, is I'm a hospice nurse and, um, my boss is my customer. A number of my coworkers are my customers. So we actually have, we do not call it an aroma therapy because um, we can't, we're not aroma therapists, um, but we do use um, oils in our hospice program. So we have sprays and we have rollers and we need, that's a whole, Carol, just to let you know, like that's a whole nother thing. But um, just to let you know, in a healthcare setting, if you're going to be using the oils topically, which would be the rollers, um, you do need a physician's order. Okay. Hospice patients that are at home is a little bit different. <clears throat> you still need an order if you're going to be using it topically, even though it's not considered, it's not a medication. Um, you do need a physician's order to use it topically. You need to say what it's going to be used for. Okay. In a clinical setting, you want to be careful. I have a number of, um, I have two going on three actually next week, um, three dementia units where they have diffusers going throughout their dementia units. So that's a whole nother program. And I'm more than happy to share our hospice um, oil program, but it's amazing. We use it for our facility patients. Um, we put diffusers by the bedside for sleep. For anxiety, hospice nurses are angels. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. I've been doing it for more than 20 years. Um, so we use the rollers um, and we find that the families are liking them too. So we did one, um, a roller with orange also. So, and we have um, little hospice oil packets that we give our staff. So they have dropper bottles with the orange um, we bought a bunch of diffusers so they can borrow a diffuser. Um, and the oranges for uplifting. Um, we have the lavender. And actually, we just ordered a bunch of diffusers um, because we are out of them and we're putting them in people's homes. So they're good for sleep. They're good for anxiety. Um, they're also good. I, I don't want to get too disgusting here, but when there's odors. Okay. We all know that like we use our oils to make our house smell good. So when someone's sick, um, families are using them, you know, to absorb those odors. So, um, it's been amazing. Our staff actually really likes the rollers too, the lavender. Um, so, um, you've done. Okay. So that's how I did the, the rescues. Um, I did it on their Facebook page and we use um, oils and I have a great book um, that talks about essential oils in a healthcare setting, essential oils for end of life care. Um, so we're always, we're always using them. Um, okay. My, oh, 
I'm going to talk quick because my computer is about to die and I don't have my phone with me. So, or my plug with me. Um, so I'm going to talk about sample groups, um, sample groups. I'm actually about to do one next week. And I set up a, fi a private Facebook group. Okay. So I talk about the sample group. I usually do about three to five different products. Um, I talk about it on my Facebook page, on my Instagram, in my project broadcast, in my education group, because I do have prospects in my education group. Um, and I do anything and everything. Okay. You could do samples of Ningxia, MindWise, Unwind. You can do the oils. You could do the protocol oils. You could do body butter, facial scrub. You can do samples of anything. And I've done a number of different ones. Um, I'm just going to show you. You can't really say. Okay, so I've done, I have these little postcards, okay? This is when I did the bloom line, okay? I did samples. And the front of the postcard says, let's take a look at your sample box. It tells the different items. And then on the back, it says, let's talk about how to use them, okay? This one, it's the same thing. I did the Unwind, Essential Zyme, the Thief Scrub, Cool Azul, and Sleek Shake. Okay. Wide variety of products. Um, I did a stress away, the charcoal bar soap, thieves toothpaste, mine wise and thieves cleaner. Again, the postcards. Okay. So that's what they get. And I have a bunch of them. Um, that's what they get when they get their products. And then I let them know ahead of time what the rules are. All I ask is that they interact and they participate that they go into the group when their samples have arrived and they post a picture and they also mm -hmm. post that picture on their personal wall. Okay. Um, because I want P and tag me because I want people to see, I want their friends to see that they can get those samples. Okay. So in that personal, in that Facebook group, I'm going to teach them about the product, how to use it, why to use it. Okay. And basically the way it works is, is um, I showed you the cards. Um, I send it out about two weeks before their, the sample group in Facebook is going to be. So the event is about five to seven days long. So about two weeks before I want to send the packets out, I start talking about it. I do teaser picks. <laughs> I start talking about the products that are going to be in there. Um, and I make it a sense of urgency to join because I have a limited number of spots. The one I'm going to be starting to talk about next week, I'm only doing 10 spots. And then I do a countdown and I say, I only have eight left. I only have seven left. Okay. I let them know from the beginning when they join what my intent is. I let them know that I share the products in hopes of them becoming a customer I tell them, this is a business. I'm not here to just give things away. I love giving you samples, but my hope is that you will become a customer with me. Okay, so once I have all my people, I create the private Facebook group. I do not charge for my samples. So I make it affordable for myself. You have to stick within your own budget. I do not charge. Um, I consider it the cost of doing business and it's a write-off. I know what my, what my budget is. And I know what I'm willing to put in as far as expense goes. Um, and I let them know this isn't about just getting free stuff. It's about learning and participation is required. Um, and I let them know they'll get rewarded for participating, which is usually a roller or a special little gift at the end for the person that participated in the most and commented the most. It goes for seven days. And the day before it starts is when I do my intro. I tell my story and what I expect of them again. So I'm constantly repeating and I'm constantly saying, hey, did you post on your um, Facebook page that you got the samples? I want to see the picture. The first five days are dedicated to the products. Okay. One post in the morning talks about the specific product they received and a post in the early evening on a related product. So if I sent them a thieves cleaner, I might in the evening talk about the thieves scrub. If I sent them stress away, I may in the evening talk about another stress oil. Okay, so I talk about related and complementary products. 
or something else in the product line. So that's the first five days talking about the five samples. On the sixth day, I do your typical Facebook class stuff. I talk about how to become a customer. Um, and I talk about loyalty. And I also talk about the business side. Okay, so that's all kind of the wrapping up. <clears throat> and then on the last day, it's my actual wrap up. Thanking everyone for joining, asking them what they like the most, um, and offer them a special incentive to be a customer. And again, that incentive varies on the number of people that are in the group, what my budget is for that month, if Young Living has specials, and things like that. So I pre-schedule all of my posts, so they're going off like that. I don't even have to think about it. Um, I do pop in throughout the day um, to make sure that I'm commenting on comments and I'm keeping up with them. And then on some days I do pop in a random post or like a fun post or an interactive post just to make sure that they're participating. Um, and I, somewhere in the middle, I ask them to post a picture of them using one of the things that they liked to get. So again, I make sure I'm on top of every product. Um, and so next week, I just, um, I don't make these postcards. A friend of mine makes them for me. And I just got for my next week and I'm doing Ningxia, MindWise, Unwind, Mighty Pro, and Alkaline. It's going to cost me nothing to mail them. They're all in pre-made packets. So that's all I have for tonight. Does anyone have any other questions? If you guys want any of this stuff, I do have notes written up. Um, I'd be happy to email them to you. They're typed up. There's some writing, but um, I know, Karen, you sent me a friend request. I will accept that. Great info. Oh, you're welcome, Carol. Thank you for asking. Do you go live or are they all, they're all pre-scheduled posts only because of my job. Sometimes in the evening, Carol, like I will go live, but I don't pressure myself to do that only because of my job. I never know if I'm going to be able to. Um, but I do try and go live once or twice. It's just, I never know when. So, but they are mostly all pre-scheduled. Yes. So, um, all right. Well, thanks. Guys. Quick, could I ask a quick question? Sure. So I have a vendor event at a local gym mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't do a lot of vendor events in my area, but this is a new gym, one of the larger gyms in the area. So I just, I have an opportunity. Somebody gave me a whole bunch of inhalers. Mm. Um, and so I was thinking about gifting some of those um, to anybody who stopped and chatted. Does that seem like a good thing to give away at the gym? I think, I think it's great. And if you're creative, like... <clears throat> you know, you could do the the pretty little label um, and depending, like maybe make two different, depending how many of those you have, maybe it's make two different ones. Like maybe make one with um, stress away. Okay. Cause you want people to be calm and focus on their workout and then maybe make one with peppermint and orange, you know, they're like, oh, I don't want to work out like, oh, you know, to kind of lift them up. But I think that's a great you know, again, you're sticking with within your budget, right? So someone gave that to you. Use inexpensive oils to make them. Um, I think it's fabulous. I love being able to hand something to someone once I've talked to them, right? You could even punch a hole in your business card, tie a string to it and tie that around there. Um, you know, and just so when you're having a conversation and just say, oh, before you go away, I have a little gift for you. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Any other questions? This was fun. This was fun. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Melissa, for allowing me to do this. All right. I'll see y'all. Have a good night. <laughs>